you want to take your text blending from looking like this to looking like this in Photoshop, then follow these quick and easy steps in this video and you're gonna become a pro in no time. So over in Photoshop here, we're gonna be creating a new canvas to work with. So I'm gonna be using 3840 by 4800 pixels with 300 resolution. It's my standard for all my poster design work. So I'm gonna hit create here. And I'm gonna paste in the image that I've selected. Now this is a Subway image that I've sourced from Unsplash and I will link it in the description of the video if I can still find it. Now my goal with this design is I wanna create a piece of text and I want it to go along the floor here. And I'm gonna try and make it look as if it's seamless within the image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type out my word. So I'm gonna be typing out the word Subway here. Now I'm gonna be using Helvetica Now Display and I'm gonna be using the bold font. So now at this point, the sizing and placement is not very essential because we're gonna be using vanishing point within Photoshop to align it perfectly to the surface. So all I'm gonna do is make sure that it's formatted how I like it. I may slightly reduce this track in here to zero, maybe actually just to minus 10. The color also doesn't matter for the time being because we can adjust it. Okay, now with our text formatted, we can move on to placing it onto the plane. So with our text layer selected here, we're gonna command click on this T icon to outline our text, and then we're gonna hide the layer and then we're gonna copy it with Command C or on Windows, Control C. So now I can deselect this. So I can use Command D to deselect this and I'm gonna create a new blank layer. Now this is where we're gonna paste our perspectively correct text onto. So with this layer selected, I'm gonna come up to Filter and Vanishing Point. Now how this Vanishing Point tool works is you create planes that are aligned with the image you want to format it onto and it helps to shape the perspective of whatever you're adding into it. So for example, with this create plane tool selected up here, it's gonna prompt me to create four points. Now these four points are gonna create a surface. So I'm trying to shape the four corners of this floor area that I'm gonna be working onto. So now because not all of these corners are in sight, you're gonna to have to kind of use other references in the image to align them. So for example, for this hidden corner down here, I'm using this yellow line as a kind of guide. Now this doesn't have to be perfect straight away because you can just adjust the points. So I'm gonna put this one just around here. And for my final point, just around here. Now it's gonna produce these kind of squares within our rectangle shape. Now this is good for figuring out whether you have the alignment right. So now you can just select individual points and drag them. Now for us with this image, there's obviously tiling on the floor and these lines can help to show you whether you're aligned with them. So I say this is good. Now with this corner, I'm just gonna move this up slightly so it aligns with the bottom of this kind of stair area here. Now just play around with this, kind of take the time to get it accurate. I say about here is good for me. And now with this plane selected, we can simply just deselect it by clicking off. I'm gonna come up to this marquee tool up here. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna use Command V to paste in our text that we've previously copied. Now with this, we can just drag this in and you're gonna notice immediately, it's gonna perspectively adjust your text to match this plane we've just created. And now to edit it here and adjust the size because it isn't always perfectly formatted, you're gonna notice here it's quite stretched. We're gonna come into this kind of arrow transform tool here and you can adjust the corners. Now from here, you don't have to worry about keeping it all in perspective. So, you know, if you shift and expand, it's obviously gonna keep it uh, at a particular scale. But for me, I kind of do want to adjust the width just to make it optically accurate. So I'm gonna make this bigger and I'm going to place it just kind of within the center of this flooring here. Now for me, I'd say this placement's quite good. So from here, I can simply just hit okay. And now on this blank layer we just created, this is gonna have our subway text. Now, if you do need to go back and adjust this, you can just repeat the same steps we just did. You can just command click on this layer, hide it, copy this outline. And then also with this layer selected, if you come back into vanishing point, the plane you just created is still gonna be there. So you can just adjust the points and go again from there. Now from here, it's just about blending it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the color. So I'm gonna come down to effects and color overlay. Now I want this a kind of a yellowy color to kind of match the vibe, but leaning more into the white side. So as a reference, I'm just gonna drag in from up here, maybe kind of on this lighter area of the stairs here, and then just go up from there. And now I'm going to turn this into a smart object as I wanted to lock in that color choice. Now from this point, it's just about blending. So the first step we're gonna take is coming down to effects and blending options. Now the way that this blend if function works is you have your current layer slider and your underlying layer. So our current layer is the text. So we want to reveal the dark areas below. Now the way we're gonna do this is drag in the dark end slider on the underlying layer. And as I do this, you're gonna notice the first things that get revealed are the darker color values on the image beneath. So you're gonna see these railings here, some of the lines in the tiles. And as I drag this in, more and more is gonna get hidden. So obviously we don't want it to be this harsh, so you can split the slider here to adjust the values. To do that, you hold option and you can drag them individually. Now this is a lot more of a softer blend. So I'm gonna drag this point up to where I would like it. And then I'm gonna slowly drag in the entry slider to hide and reveal slightly more areas. Now this is obviously gonna make the text a lot darker, but this is what we're looking for because that's more of an accurate blend and an ac accurate representation. So let me just drag in that high slider just here, maybe further out a bit more. 
Now this slider nearer the, the start is gonna be the harsher one on contrast. So you have to be really careful with this one. Just move it slowly. I'd say about there is good for me. I might make it slightly brighter. And then I can hit okay here. Now immediately this has given you a good blend. You know, it matches the light of the images, which is what makes it look so seamless. But we can add in a few more adjustments just to top this off. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna call it highlights. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eye drop a light color from this image. So for example here on these railings, I'm gonna eye drop that and I'm gonna get my simple soft brush out. And now from here, any kind of highlight I see in the image, I'm gonna paint over just to kind of accentuate it. So this kind of railing here has got some good reflections. So I'm just gonna draw over this, do the same thing here. Now I'm gonna keep this rough just for the sake of the video, but you can use the blend if functions to isolate the light areas and then kind of blur it to kind of accentuate these highlights even more. So this kind of light area here, I'm just gonna draw over. Now I found that this does not need to be perfect. This is kind of just to enhance the lighting on the image. So I'm just gonna draw a few over these steps, a few over these lights, and then a little bit over this railing here. Now from this point, you can play around with layer modes. I found that you're probably gonna go for like an overlay or a soft light. So overlay here, you can see it kind of just accentuates it and brings a bit more light and color out. And now from this point, you can come into adjustments. You can adjust your curves here, which is gonna repeat the same kind of step. So I'm gonna bring my high values up and bring those lower values down a little bit. Just play around with the balance here. And now the only thing that I would recommend is you can see that these type edges can be quite harsh. They don't look too accurately blended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this layer with the text on. I'm gonna duplicate it just to keep a kind of copy of it. And I'm gonna convert this to a smart object again. And then I'm gonna come up to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Now this is just gonna blur the edges ever so slightly so that it's a little bit more of a softer blend on the surface. So you're gonna notice as I bring this up and up and up, it's gonna take a little bit of detail away, but makes it blend much more smoothly. So I'll probably set it around two or two and a half. I'd say two is good for me here, then hit okay. And there we go, from this point, you can just add in your texture overlays and any other text that you wanna add in. But for the most part, this is the video complete and how to properly blend text onto a surface. Guys, as always, thank you so much for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you can find this useful and that you learn something to add to your own design arsenal. Now, YouTube's gonna recommend you another video of mine just here that it thinks you need to see. So go ahead and watch that and I'll see you over there.